So what I've done is this is the outside dimension of my sheet of drawing paper, which for you is gonna be half of your sheet of drawing paper, which is gonna be 12 by 18. And all I did was I'm creating a smaller picture plane, right? Which is what I've done here. And I basically, I just put tape, one inch tape, just around the outside edge of the paper. Um, and it came down to about three inches down to here. So now I just, I've made, basically I framed the smaller picture plane. And then I did another inch here and another inch here. And when I'm done, when it, what, what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna have a value scale, like what you saw in the presentation, where I'm gonna try to have a transitional value scale that's gonna try to match the values that I'm creating up in my main image up here. Okay, so again, half sheet of drawing paper. If you, if you wanna do something full sheet of drawing paper, that's fine. But just remember, you're just doing an, you're creating an outside you're creating a smaller picture plane by creating tape going around the outside edge. And then you're creating another one inch um, value scale by creating, by putting one inch tape around it, okay? It doesn't have to be absolutely exact, but just, just so you can see that you're creating an image that has an outside taped border and you're creating a value scale that has an outside taped border. So I am going to be using my very soft extremely soft vine charcoal, vine charcoal sticks, and I'm gonna be using my black pastel, the thicker sticks. These will be the two charcoals, and I'm gonna be using my eraser too, to create this drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slowly just start building up, and remember, this is gonna be abstract. I just want you to really think about just laying down shapes of value. Okay, so when I lay this down, and remember when you're using your vine charcoal, use it on its side. Don't, don't draw with it like this. Try to have it on its side and soften it up on its side and lay it down on its side. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay down um, what's looking like maybe a medium to dark gray. Um, and then obviously, because it's vine charcoal, when I blend it, it is gonna lighten itself up a little bit. Okay, so I'm just laying down again, just random shape of value. Okay, since I think that that looks approximately like a middle gray, I know in my value, in my value scale that it's gonna go from the lightest light to the darkest dark. So I'm just gonna put right in the middle here where I think that gray would end up being in the value scale for now. And we're gonna be able to manipulate this value scale as we keep laying down values as we go. So now, just to get a sense, so I'm, cause I'm gonna to try to find a whole range, cause I want a full range in my value that I'm creating in, in, in this image, which is gonna be abstract. And it's just gonna be shapes of value. I'm just thinking of shapes of value next to value. So now I know that the darkest dark is going to be my black pastel. So I'm gonna lay that down in my value scale right down here, and I'm gonna blend it. And I'm gonna blend it, I'm gonna start lightening it as it moves that direction. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down just a shape of, of black, okay? So remember, all, all you're gonna to wanna to end up with, so when you're creating this, obviously you can think about composition in terms of how you lay down the shapes, how big they are, you know, if there's some that are, have a little bit more weight, that, that's, that's entirely up to you. But the main focus, again, is going to be about creating a range of value and shapes of value next to value, so you're contrasting all the shapes next to each other, okay? That's the most important thing. And I'm gonna lay down a darker black shape over here, just randomly like this, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so once I start laying down the, I have the kind of the extremes right now that are occurring, okay? I have my black is black, which I've laid down in my value scale. I have kind of what's a medium gray, and then I have my white, and the white that I'm gonna isolate, there's gonna be shapes of white on my paper that I'm gonna isolate. 
And now I'm going to have to try to find all the values. Um, if they go from zero to 100%, I'm like, I've laid down what I think is like around a 50% value, and I've laid down a 100% value, and then I have a 0% value, which is white. So now I'm going to have to try to find all those other percentages, those other grays, in my drawing and start working out the range the best way I can. So now I'm going to start adding lighter grays. And I'm going to get a little bit of a texture um, <clears throat> of the wall coming through, unfortunately. Um, if you're doing this on a really flat surface, you won't get this. So you can see that that gray is a little bit darker than that gray. So that gray, I'm going to know that on the value scale, it's going to be kind of farther down this way. So I'm just going to lay down a little bit of the vine charcoal down here. Now I'm going to try to do what I think might be that gray. Just kind of amplify it just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to try to do them in other spots. So again, all, all you're trying to do is you're trying to create like a really kind of wide range in laying down values. So really think about the pressure when you're laying down your vine charcoal and when you're blending it, try to blend it really evenly either with your finger or your paper stomps um, or even a tissue. So now I'm using a little bit more pressure. Okay, and then this gray now is darker than that gray and that gray, but not as dark as that gray. So now I'm going to lay down that value here. And I'm going to start blending it, start blending these all in together a little bit like this, moving them this way. Okay, now I'm going to try to see if I can get a value that's now darker than that, but not as dark as my black. And one way I can do that, <clears throat> when you're trying to get darker grays, if you use your black pastel and you don't, you very gingerly, I'm barely using any pressure, you can blend that in, because the, the, the vine charcoal is only going to get so dark. And so you're going to have to, to get darker grays, you're going to have to blend in your black pastel to the vine charcoal. So now that is actually darker than that. So now when I want to lay down this value, <clears throat> I'm going to go darker here. Okay, I'm going to blend it into here. But now again, just like what I did here, I'm going to add a little bit of my black pastel to that gray. Okay, so now I can see that it's going light, medium, grays. It's getting darker, and this is the darkest gray. Um, and again, I'm just going to start laying down shapes. And you can, start, uh, you can start creating different areas of shapes, just laying down values. Just, like, again, you just want to end up with a really strong range of shapes of value next to each other. So it looks like your eye is creating a really nice kind of asymmetry with all the different components of the shapes of value. And then also just remember that you can start, if you want to go back in and use your eraser to start taking out some areas of light and being subtractive, you can lighten areas, okay? Even here, use my eraser, either your kneaded eraser or your Statler eraser <coughs> or your click eraser, and then just start taking out light and start Kind of building up the whole range in value. So I'm going to switch over to doing it um, in time lapse so you can see how I create the whole thing. But just make sure you start off with your vine charcoal and your black pastel and just start laying down shapes of value. Start kind of composing it, refining it however you want. It's going to end up looking abstract. That doesn't matter. You're just trying to create as much of a range and a contrast of all the different values and you're going to try to create a very strong transitional value scale that's matching the values in your main image.
So I've got a multitude of values. Obviously, it, it looks like an abstraction, but there's a full range of values and contrast occurring in it. And that, that's all I want you to do. So what, whatever ends up kind of emerging from the interaction of all the different shapes and values that you get, that's totally cool. Um, also know that, you know, I went back in with my kneaded eraser and my erasers and I was being subtractive and additive and really think about using the pressure of your erasers. That will give you more of a range in terms of what you get. So what you're going to do at when you're done with this and you've, and, and I've got a value scale that's matching the values that are occurring in the image is you're going to take your piece outside and you're going to spray it with your fixative. And I'm going to spray it right now in my studio because I have really good ventilation in my studio, but I want you to make sure that you go outside and you spray it outside and keep your drawing maybe up against your pad, have it vertical up against a wall. Um, just as long as it's outside and you're not spraying it indoors. And then after that, what you're going to do is you are going to take off and make sure you do this. Make sure you take off the tape. Okay. So before you send in the JPEG to canvas, just make sure that you photograph it after you take off the tape. And if you get little inconsistencies like what you're seeing here that's that's totally cool it's charcoal and inevitably that's probably going to end up happening a little bit okay but i just want you to see what happens it just doesn't have the same and make sure that when you take off the tape that you do it a little bit slower than i'm doing it i'm i have like very good low tack blue tape so that's why it's not ripping my paper at all <coughs> Um, so just sometimes if it starts ripping, just kind of take it off. See how I'm kind of doing it at an angle? Start taking it off at an angle like that. Okay. Okay. So, and then if I go back with my neat eraser, I can clean up. If there's little spots that are, you know, around the edges or whatever, I just don't worry about it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen inevitably no matter what. what I just did there. Okay, so as you can see, this is your transitional value scale that's matching your values in your image. Okay, so you've got your lightest lights, you've got your grays, your light grays, you've got your medium grays, and slowly going in to your darker grays. So when you're done with this and it looks like this, just put it up on a wall shoot it vertically so it's parallel and um, flush to obviously your photo thing and then just take a photo of it and then just send me the JPEG on canvas.